I got sworn in to be a congressman, I look at the corner of my eye up in the balcony, I see my father, who only had a fourth grade education, wiping away the tears. I'd never seen my father cry in my life. So when he came down, I said, Daddy, why are you crying? You crying because your son, you know, become, became a congressman? He said, no. He said, now I see what I could have been. What I could have been if I'd been given the education. There are 55 members of the Congressional Black Caucus. Three of the members are in the top leadership in the House of Representatives. Five members chair full committees and 22 members chair subcommittees. Every major piece of legislation that is passed through the House of Representatives has the stamp of the Congressional Black Caucus on it. But the one thing that is missing has been members of the Black Caucus actually telling their story and letting the country know what it is that they have accomplished. I would see cousins or uncles um, that would go to prison, come out and try to, to get a job, try to go straight, and have so much, so many doors shut in their face. I can still remember the look on one of my cousin's faces when he did not get a job. It was like a cleaning job. Ultimately, he ended up going back into that life. Ultimately, he was murdered. While I was in the hospital, there was a lady who was about to get out after about three weeks. She had gotten an operation. And she says to me, uh, I'm about to get out today. And I said, uh, what are you going to do now? And then she started crying. And I said, why are you crying? I said, you're getting out. You're getting ready to go home. She said, I got the operation, but now I can't afford the cure. She couldn't afford the medicine. couldn't afford the copay. She didn't have it. I am the Congresswoman that represents the state of Delaware. Uh, we only have one. When I won in 2016, it was the first time Delaware had ever elected a woman to Congress or a person of color. I currently have a bill called Clean Slate, and it is a bill to basically say, if you're trying to go for a job or trying to get into college or get an apartment, right now, nine out of 10 employers ask for a background check, four out of five uh, apartments and landlords ask for it, and three out of five colleges. You should be able to get a job and, and, and have a place to live. You should be able to have a clean slate. Access to higher education is extremely important, and that's why members of the Congressional Black Caucus are making sure that we reauthorize the Higher Education Act, making college more affordable, and making student loans easier to pay off. Another issue that I'm concerned about is opioids. Right now we know only one out of every 10 people who need treatment are getting it. So I have a bill called the CARE Act. It gives $100 billion over the course of 10 years to help treat people and giving them the wraparound services that they need. The United States rankings for maternal mortality are awful. Black women are dying too frequently because of childbirth in the United States. We are four times more likely to die as a result of childbirth than any other group. Maternal mortality, the fact that black women die in childbirth in 2019 in the United States is really outrageous. That is something that happens in developing countries, should never happen in our country. There are huge disparities in wealth, where some at the very low end have very little bit to work with. And those at the high end are not only very wealthy, but getting more and more wealthy every day. It is inexcusable that people have to work two and three jobs just to keep a roof over their heads. Members of the Congressional Black Caucus are at the forefront to lead the fight to raise the nation's minimum wage to $15 an hour. There is a coordinated attack that is happening uh, in our states, in our courts, legislatively. This tsunami of hurt that we're experiencing. America gets a cold, black folks get pneumonia. We can't have a conversation about transportation and housing and not talk about jobs and people having health care, working at a living wage. 
and these times really demand bold activist leadership. Well, members of the Congressional Black Caucus represent the least, the lost, and the left behind, and we're in a moment of turbulence right now. It's personal. It's personal because when you've been on the receiving end of discrimination, you don't want to see that for anybody, for any groups, whether it be labor, whether it be women, whether it be the LGBTQ community, just all groups of fighting for equality across the board. CBC looks at the issue of housing and the lack of housing. What does that mean not to have a shelter over your head? And what does gentrification mean to your security in housing? The impact of white nationalism on the safety and security of our communities. As a black man uh, who grew up in the inner city, the reason why I got into politics was because I couldn't get uniforms for my little league team. And I was using my law school loan money or my parents' small business was paying for all the travel, all the uniforms. When you see the effects of mass incarceration and the failed war on drugs, which really became a war on inner cities, more specifically black males, we have to do something about it. For decades, people have come up with plans to stop us from voting. Whether it was changing the polling place, reducing the number of days that we could vote, our ID cards. Another tactic is not counting all of us in the census. If we are not counted in the census, then our resources for our communities are cut, or the number of people we can elect to represent us is reduced. Voter suppression tactics in the census all go together. My mother, uh, who died here recently, the last words she said to me was, do not let them take away our right to vote. The one thing that makes us all equal, the one thing that gives us the same power, is a vote. It is our voice. If we choose not to use our voice, then we are the losers. Let us be a part of making sure that the government works for us. So put people there who have your interest at heart, and not those who would hurt you or ignore you.